Boxing Day match. Quinns and Bristol from the stoop. It's a bit of a game of two halves. Bristol get all the points in the end. 27 points to 19. Four tries to one. Um, yeah, I'll go over some of the key points of the game. The stats, and you guys can let me know your thoughts on how this one went. I was pretty happy with it, to be fair. It's Sunday over here, the day after Boxing Day. And... Got up to watch some rugby. I didn't get up and watch it live. It was like three in the morning. So yeah, first thing was some breakfast. It was a pretty good watch. Like as I say, game of two halves. Like halftime score is nine points to five. So most of the points scored in that second half. Um, at Bristol, especially either side of halftime, pretty brutal. Apparently, Pat Lamb was not very happy with uh, with his boys at halftime, and probably rightly so. Interestingly, this one, Quinn's had a lot of trouble with the kickoffs. Like, any kickoff or restart, they really, really struggled to to just kind of retain the ball, like get the ball and kick it out or, you know, get a proper exit going. They just really struggled with it. It was, it was a real, I don't know, coachable thing that they can work on. Um, Bristol were opting for touch every time they got penalties early. Uh, on f was it three minutes? Hughes looked like he was going over for all money, but Don Brandt and Evans did pretty well to hold him up. Uh, finally, after like four minutes of sustained pressure, Harlequins did manage to exit. I wrote that I was amazed that they held out as long as they did, but that was the story of the first half. Honestly, man, Harlequins did really well to hold out uh, Bristol's attack, but likewise, Bristol's attack was, was a bit lackluster in that first half. Uh, six minutes, Harlequins went down the other end, opt for the three. And it's 3-0 after having, like, no ball, no territory. First points down the other end. Harlequins take him. Can't blame him. Uh, Ten minutes. I thought Harlequins' mall defense was very good. Uh, it was about the second time they'd had to hold Bristol out from pretty close range. Bristol was still opting for touch with all their penalties. Uh, 14 minutes was one of the... Like, Marcus Smith had a pretty decent game, I thought. Defensively, he tackled some pretty big blokes a few times. He scored their only try. Like, he put a little chip through for Tapuai at one point. They had a two-on-one chance. Um, but as Tapuai was throwing it, to think, to Brown, the, the Bristol wing and the long one made a really good intercept. And it's one of those ones that it's like, man, if you get that wrong, you go into the bin. Absolutely go into the bin. So he taps it, ball goes up, and he manages to, to regather it. If he taps it and knocks it on, it's a two-on-one, and he's gone to the bin. For all money. So, yeah, perfect, perfect intercept play from him. But he's managed to be retained by the uh, Harlequins defense as well. So no points come of it. 23 minutes, I wrote Bristol's line-out was pretty messy. They end up going backwards from their line-out. They end up conceding a breakdown penalty. And Harlequins, again, take the three. So, man, 6-0. And I can see why Pat Lamb was starting to get pretty pissed off, to be fair. Uh, 25 minutes, Bristol win a penalty after another Harlequins poor attempt at a kickoff receipt, but they still go for touch. They're not going for the three. The mall defense holds. Randall tries to pass it to Sheedy. They knock it on. They're all kind of all at sea uh, on attack. 29 minutes, Yoan Lloyd gets a nice line break. He passes to Rand Randra. And as I thought, maybe it's a bad pass from the angle. We look back at it, but no, he passed it pretty much to his chest. Rand Randra just out on the left wing. Fumbled it, man. It was just very uncharacteristic stuff. Uh, unfortunately, Mellon's had to go off. Seems he was injured. Uh, 31 minutes, Harlequin win the penalty after a uh, attacking play. They did a... They, that was their best attacking play. They did a tap and go. They get the ball to Wilco Lowe. Danny Kier passes it to Lowe, who's got a little pod set up. He goes over. And this will maybe be a bit of a point of frustration for, for Quinns. He goes over. The ref says no try because nobody's got a grounding. The TMO has a look at it. And man, it's definitely a try. But the cameras can't show definitively that he got the ball down but you can tell because there's an arm in the way the ball goes on the other side of that arm that's where the try line is he definitely got it down but by the laws of the game that can't be a try which is pretty unfortunate so mm. uh so yeah that's kind of a mischance for um for quinn's because 
Uh, yeah, they, they're 9-0 up with penalties at that point. If they've got a try to make it, you know, like 16 points ahead, it might have been a different game. But not to be. And uh, eventually Bristol got on the other end. Thomas puts it inside ball to Lua Tua. Big line break. He gives it back to Thomas and goes over in the corner for a try. They missed the conversion. So halftime is 9 points to 5. Bristol had so much in that first half, but man, Quinn's defense was pretty solid, and they were winning some serious turnovers, making Bristol make, some, uh, make mistakes. Uh, second half, Lua Tua gets a try, so they strike either side of halftime, which is a bit of a coach killer. Um, Randall gets the ball. He taps it from advantage, and uh, he gives it to, to Lua Tua, who goes over. That was all from like Will Evans kicking the ball out and it having to be, to be brought back. But that all came about from like Nathan Hughes getting a strip on one of the Harlequins players, so able to put the Harlequins guys under pressure. So yeah, it was a, a bit of a, a series of errors that kind of led to that one. Uh, 46 minutes, Harlequins win a penalty uh, from the kickoff actually to make it 12 points apiece because they kick it. Bristol kicked the next penalty to make it 15-12. Uh, Bristol missed their next penalty. And... Kind of 10 minute spurts, 44, 55, and 66, right? Bristol just keep piling on the points. Randall's one. It's man, Hughes is just huge, isn't he? He just seems like such a big human. He draws in about three tacklers. And then from the base of that ruck, there's just acres of space for Randall to snipe back blindside. And he goes over for a try. At that point, it's 20 points to 12. Um, but again, prior to that, Danny Kerr, I think, had put it out on the full. So, yeah, it's always that era that leads up to it. Um, and 66 minutes, Bristol kind of were going for the jugular, as the commentators put it. Uh, they messed up initially with a line-out not going straight, but then when they got a chance to attack, attack back, um, Randall again, he gave it to Lua Tua again. Those guys were so busy, and then Lua Tua to Adi Olokan. He goes over untouched on the left wing, and it's 27-12. That's pretty much game over. Uh, Harlequins did have a few chances, a big scrum. They tapped it, and we're having a nice little break. They knocked it on. Eventually, Smith gets the final try of the game with some magic steps at the death. Makes some defenders look pretty flat-footed, but it's a consolation try, 27 points to 19. Second half, man. Apparently, when they interviewed... Uh, Pat Lamb at halftime, he basically said, he showed the guys the door and said, who wants to get on the bus? Because you guys, like, this is your work. Christmas is over. If you guys don't want to be here, just get on the bus. And he said, thankfully, nobody, nobody left. Uh, and then they interviewed, um, they interviewed Thomas at the end. And Dan Thomas, and he said, like, they asked him about it. And he said, yeah, he basically asked if anyone wanted to leave. So... Yeah, Pat Lamb was not a happy chappy at halftime. Uh, final stats, 41-59 was the position in Bristol's favor. 61-39 again, territory in Bristol's favor. So they had all of that. Tackles, 141 to 124. Quinn's having to make more. 83% tackle percentage for Quinn's, 89 for Bristol. Turnovers, one was an area where Harlequins did well, 10 to 4. So that was kind of keeping the minute at times. But you look, defenders beating 29-16 to Bristol. And Quinn's too many penalties, 13-8 to from Bristol. Individuals, Will Evans made 17 out of 21 tackles. And he managed four turnovers. So a few missed tackles, but pretty good defensive shift. Lua Tua had 33 meters, 17 out of 18 tackles, and five defenders beaten. Mm, crazy stuff. They brought on some guy for his de debut, and Yamwu. Like 20 seconds to go. I guess it's a way of taking this thing out the debut, but it just seemed... I don't know. I never got those kind of replace a guy with 20 seconds to go. At least give him five minutes. Anyway. But yeah, good entertaining game. Not what Quinns would have wanted. They didn't score enough points for the majority of that second half until that last try. They'd only scored three. And uh, Bristol just like piled on the points, as I said, before half time, And then bang, bang, bang. 10 minutes spurts. Yeah. Tough, tough for, for Quinns to take, but man, Bristol really kicked it up a notch. Don Brown went off pretty early, which was a bit unusual as well, because his battle up against Hughes had been a pretty interesting one. But um, yeah, what did you guys reckon? Good game. Uh, Bristol, how far do you think they can go in the competition, man? They're looking like a pretty decent team. But anyway, uh, you guys let me know your thoughts. Take care. And, oh, if you, I think there's still 
sales on with the England Rugby Store. If you want to get yourself some England gear, I'll put the link in the description for that one. But um, yeah, you guys take care of yourselves and I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.